Hey guys, it's John here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be doing a Sea Monkey action figure unboxing and retro review. For those of you who don't know, Sea Monkeys are a brand of brine shrimp that are sold in small kits like this as an aquarium pet. They were first marketed in comic books in the late 1950s using these notorious illustrations of pink anthropomorphic creatures which were supposed to represent the small brine shrimp that came with the kits. Despite the illustrations being quite misleading, these fanciful characters became well known in the cultural zeitgeist in the latter half of the 20th century and are a big part of what has made the brand so successful. In April 2004, Majestic Studios immortalized the Sea Monkey family characters in action figure form, releasing them to both the American and Japanese markets. Strangely though, the figures had different packaging designs in both regions. In America they were available in three separate sets, where the clamshell packaging resembled a test tube. One had just the sea monkey father, and another had the mother, and the third set contained both the daughter and the son together. Each of these had a recommended retail price of only $7.99. In Japan they took things up a notch, releasing the action figures in two deluxe combo sets. One had the father and son together, along with the addition of a seahorse, while the second combo pack had the mother and daughter, who were accompanied with a snail. Both of these sets cost $14.95 each. All of these action figures are long since sold out, but they've developed a bit of a cult-like status among Sea Monkey collectors today, which is why finding these combo sets still packaged like this will set you back around $400. US dollars. I was lucky to pick these up second hand on a Japanese auction site for $200, which I thought was a decent price. I'm just going to focus on the Japanese combo sets for this video, because they have all six of the characters. The front of the father and son packaging has a fishbowl aesthetic, which I think is a great design choice. Majestic Studios typically had their action figures in rectangular boxes during this time, so that was a nice touch. Up top we have the words, The Amazing Live Sea Monkeys Action Figures, along with the Majestic Studios logo. Coming down we have a portrait photo of the father and son together, along with the seahorse and some small air bubbles. Front and centre are the action figures themselves, with some vintage sea monkey artwork behind them, which we'll take a better look at once I open this up. Down the bottom are the phrases, Guaranteed Fun and Guaranteed to Amaze. These are a clear reference to the famous Guaranteed to Grow tagline, which has become a well-known part of the Sea Monkey brand. Flipping over to the back, we have some more references to vintage Sea Monkey products and marketing. Up top is the iconic Hatchie illustration, which features a baby Sea Monkey hatching from its egg, with the words Just Add Fun next to it, a play on the Just Add Water instructions found in Sea Monkey kits. Over here it says, The Miracle of Instant Action Figures, another easter egg reference to the brand's famous Instant Life tagline. Coming down we have a photo of the different action figures from the entire collection, and then a small description of the history of the Sea Monkeys brand. On the right hand side is a reference to the three step process for starting a Sea Monkey colony, the large number graphics of which have come from the 1975 Miracle of Life box art. Usually these steps say, 1. Put the water purifier in a glass of water. two. Add the sea monkey eggs. And three, in just minutes, they're alive. But here it says, one, open package and remove action figures. Two, tail is bendy and fully poseable. Three, hours of amazement, instant fun. The packaging for the mother, daughter, and snail figures are identical, other than the small portrait photograph on the front and the air bubbles. At the time of release, Rick Fears, who was the CEO of Majestic Studios said, we believe the Amazing Live Sea Monkeys will be our most significant retro toy launch to date. The classic nature of these characters, combined with the simulated underwater environment, will provide tremendous inspiration to the nostalgic collector. If you look at it closely, they were the first Pokemon. When you saw the ad in the comic book, you wanted to collect them all. I can definitely say this was the case for me. There's something addictive about collecting retro Sea Monkey products, and I had my eyes set on these guys for a long time before I bought them. These action figures are 18 years old now, so I think it's about time we open these relics up and take a closer look. I'm going to do this really carefully so I don't damage the packaging too much. They've definitely got a bit of a smell to them, but I guess that's to be expected for their age. Before we get to the figures though, I want to show you this illustration that forms the background on the front of the paper insert. This fishbowl image is another incredible masterpiece by Joe Orlando, and it was used a lot in early Japanese marketing and packaging, such as in these two vintage magazine advertisements from the 1970s. So the use of this illustration here is a cool connection to the brand's artistic history. Here's a look at the Sea Monkey Father. He's the tallest of the action figures at 19 centimeters, and considering its age, the condition seems to be really good. What I really love about these action figures is how faithful their design and proportions are to those original illustrations. Everything from the antennae, to the scale-like texture on their chest, to the long fin running down their tail is bang on perfect. 
so they really give you a sense of picking the artwork up off the page and holding it in your hands. The mother is slightly shorter at 17 centimeters tall, and just like the other sea monkeys in this set, her head, arms and legs can all be articulated by small joints in their neck, shoulder and hip, allowing you to play around with different poses. The arms have the largest range of motion, while the legs simply swing back and forth. The head is on a ball joint that you can rotate and tilt, though not to any significant degree. I love the small details in her makeup and vibrant blonde hair, giving her a very feminine 60s look. The red bow is a nice touch too. The son is essentially a smaller version of the father, though his grin looks a little mischievous. If you remember on the packaging, it mentioned that their tails are poseable. I don't want to force this too much, but it does work. I quite like the position they come in though, so it's not really something I'm going to be playing around with. The young daughter is a spitting image of her mother, the main difference being her shorter stature and lack of a bow at the base of her antennae. Something I've not mentioned about these figures is that they're not particularly stable when standing up. It often takes me quite a few tries and some minor adjustments of the limbs to get everything balanced so they don't fall down. It would have been nice to see a small display stand of some kind that clips into their feet to reduce the chance of knocking them over. And here's the seahorse and snail. To be honest, these are a bit of an unusual addition in these kits. Animals with the three antennae do feature on Sea Monkey product packaging, but they were a much later addition in the 1990s, whereas the Sea Monkey characters in the packaging for this kit calls back to a much older design aesthetic of the 60s and 70s. I do think these look cool though. The seahorse comes with a shell stand to help keep it upright, which is a nice addition too. While searching online for some history about these action figures, I came across an old press release that was put out just before they made it into stores. Up top was a photo of the upcoming figures, but if you look closely, you'll notice something a little unusual. Firstly, the snail and seahorse are proportionally much smaller than they are in reality, but strangely, the seahorse here is purple rather than yellow. While looking at the box art on some of my other sea monkey kits, I did find some seahorses. Firstly a yellow one on the Robodiver kit, but also a purple one on my Explorer sub box. I believe this photo is likely of a prototype which was made before the action figures were officially manufactured. So if any of you out there have this rare purple seahorse, it's probably worth a lot of money. As for the snail, it seems that the reference illustration used as inspiration for it came from the 1996 Ocean Zoo tank wrap insert, the same character of which was also used in the box art for the Porter Pet kit in the early 2000s. I also spoke to Todd Machen, who's the current illustrator for Train Science, to see if he knew anything else about the history of these action figures. To my surprise, he was personally instrumental in their inception, and he had been drafting up Sea Monkey action figure product ideas long before they were actually made. Todd told me that during the New York Toy Fair, he would walk the floor and chat up any vendors dealing with the retro theme to see if he could interest them in his idea of producing Sea Monkey toys. Funko was one of them, and Majestic Studios another. He pitched the idea of Sea Monkey action figures, saying they'd be perfect to include in their line, and gave them the contact information for both Trans Science and Exploratory, who were producing the Sea Monkey products at the time. It just so happened that a few years later in 1996, Funko released the Wacky Wobbler Bobblehead Sea Monkey toy, which was very similar to Todd's illustrated design, and then Majestic Studios followed suit in the early 2000s with these action figures. These toys have become a great piece of Sea Monkey history, and I think their execution was pretty much perfect, other than their minor balancing issues. To some people they're perhaps a little creepy looking. Maybe they've come a little too close to entering the uncanny valley, where they look almost human, but not quite. Personally I love them though. I'm planning to make a 9 litre DIY Sea Monkey tank at some point, using these guys as aquarium decor, so make sure you're subscribed for that, and I'll catch you in the next video.